It's now my real honor and privilege to introduce our keynote speaker for today, Stacy Brown Philpot. Stacy is a Wharton grad, class of 1997. She is the CEO of TaskRabbit, connecting you with the people who can do all the tasks you need to have done all around your home. Now that's a long way from where Stacy started. She came to Wharton to be an accountant. She went to PricewaterhouseCoopers out of her undergraduate degree. Then it was the Wharton School, so she went to Goldman Sachs to be an investment banker, to do the IB thing. But then she did a pivot. She did a massive pivot across the country. She went to Google. Sheryl Sandberg is her, one of her mentors, and Sheryl advised Stacy early on that she needed to get out of finance. She needed to get into broader parts of Google because she was an emerging leader. She went from managing 14 people to managing 200 people overnight. Because of her successes, she was asked to head up Google India. And by the way, that's in India. And during her time in India, Google India went from 200 to 2,000 employees. Since 2012, uh, in 2012, she moved to TaskRabbit, where she's the CEO. She scaled the business. She scaled the business so successfully that TaskRabbit was acquired by IKEA in 2017. But of course, IKEA was smart enough to know that they needed to allow Stacy to stay on as CEO of TaskRabbit to ensure that all the potential synergies between a company that ships you furniture in a box and a company that can help you assemble it could be realized. In addition to her work at TaskRabbit in San Francisco, Stacy is on the boards of Nordstrom and HP. For those of us who remember earlier days, that's the former Hewlett Packard, now called HB. She also has been a real game changer in Black Girls Code, and she is, I know very proudly, a member of the Penn Trustees Council of Penn Women. Can you please join me in welcoming Stacy to the podium? Thank you. I am so honored to be here today with all of you back at the greatest business school in the country. I, I came to Wharton from Detroit with my mom on a Greyhound bus 26 years ago. I actually remember buying my first piece of furniture for my dorm room. In fact, it was a piece of IKEA furniture. So as you can imagine, my company being acquired by IKEA was a pretty big deal for me. So when you all leave here and move into your fancy new apartments, you're going to learn to need and love TaskRabbit and IKEA. Remember that, <laughs> IKEA. Now. I appreciate the opportunity to spend some time back on campus, to walk down Locust Walk, to visit Steinberg Dietrich Hall, and most importantly, to stand in front of you today. But who am I and what am I doing standing in between you and your party? Today, I'm here to give you lessons for tomorrow when you emerge from your responsible but well-deserved hangover. <laughs> Each of you, as evidenced by the fact that you are sitting here today in a cap and gown, is already accomplished. You are already making your mark on the world. Who you are has been formed by your experiences to this point, just as my experience growing up in Detroit and coming to Wharton shaped me. But as you move to the next phase of your life, ask yourself, what kind of leader will you be? It's a question that I ask myself routinely. Because 22 years ago, I took the same cap and gown walk down Locust that you're going to take tomorrow. I had great expectations and a great education. I worked hard 
I struggled through, and I've had a good life. And a lot of it has been thanks to Wharton. But I also remember sitting where you sit, thinking what you might be thinking right now under these buildings. And truth be told, I eventually learned that many of the things that I believed about my path ahead of me were wrong. So I'd like to share with you a few of the things that I was wrong about in the hopes that you'll be right about them. Or not, either way, I can promise you that your life journey and your career journey will be an interesting ride. First, I was wrong about needing people who love and support me. I thought I could accomplish everything I wanted entirely on my own. I mean, I grew up in a household of four generations of women who all taught me the strength you get from being able to do it all yourself. But what I believed about being independent turned out to not be entirely true. Many years ago, as Dean Garrett mentioned, Google asked me to move to India for a big promotion. It was a huge opportunity to stretch myself and learn and grow as an executive. But I didn't think I was ready. I had so much to learn, and, but I knew I always wanted to live abroad. My husband, Chris, who's sitting in the back, back there, knows me more deeply than anyone and loves me with all my flaws. My husband, who I met, by the way, here at Wharton, he wouldn't be moving to India with me, but he encouraged me to take the role. That role helped me get to where I am today, and I couldn't have done it without the support of those who love me. So where do you start learning about love and support? Start with yourself. Your success will depend on how hard you work, what you commit, and how much you manage your career. Ask for help, but graduates, nobody is ever really going to manage you. Your first business project is the business of loving yourself. And don't worry too much about the naysayers. Here's something that my mom told me when I was bullied in middle school. Kids can say things, but they can never take away your education and what you put in your brain. You may be older, but bullies never really go away. And they should never take away your education and what you put in your brain. All that really matters, graduates, are the people around you. The people who you love and the people who love you back. Here's another thing that I was wrong about. Brace yourself. Money. Ooh, money at a Wharton event. I grew up on the Detroit's west side, and we didn't have a lot of money. I decided to study business in college so I could make some. It's really easy to want money when you don't have it and when you see a lot of other people who do. In fact, it's really easy to want money no matter what. To be specific, when I was 14, I wanted a navy blue coach bag, the one with the drawstrings. Getting that bag was what I thought it meant to make it. And when I left Wharton and when I got that job, I got the bag, I bought it. And I went on to buy many others. At the time, I thought that being able to afford my own things was what would give me personal security. And yes, it did feel good to buy that bag and the next one and the next one. But money and things didn't sustain my happiness. I don't believe that they do for anyone, truly. In fact, even when I was at Google, with a corner office, floor to ceiling windows, personal assistant, the happiness that came from that and money didn't sustain. So consider along your own path. Consider this. Make money, sure but keep looking for what truly sustains you. I was also wrong about something pretty significant, what true conversation looks like. What do I mean by that? Well, tomorrow when you leave this place, you will step into a world full of people who don't think, 
act or look like you. There's no local locust walk, there's no school routine, and there's no social guarantee. And you have to show up for that world and for the people in it, the real world, not the one that you may have constructed in your head. Showing up means learning how to have true conversations that helps bring us all closer together, closer to the truth. I only learned to show up, really show up, three years ago, Monday, July 11, 2016. Most of you all would have been between your freshman and sophomore years here. The week prior, there had been two successive shootings of black men by police officers, um, which accelerated the Black Lives Matter movement. I was in London, working, and on July 7, a friend and former coworker from Google sent me an email that basically said, I'm sorry, I don't know how to process this, and I don't know what to say to you. Let me know if you want to talk. He asked the question. I was paralyzed. I get home, my team is appalled, empathetic, full of emotions. They don't know what to do. Now, on Monday mornings at TaskRabbit, we have our company meeting where we celebrate successes and get excited for the week. It's really joyous. But on Monday, July 11, I decided to talk to the company about what it was like to be black in America. I talked about how early on, I learned different rules for situations in life, like when you get pulled over by the police. I wasn't looking for pity. I wanted the people in the company that I love so much to see me, to really see me, to ask me how I'm doing, so I can honestly tell them. It was the first time that I spoke out as a black CEO and not just a tech CEO. And it brought us in the company closer together. We are too afraid today of hurting people's feelings. And as a result, we don't truly show up for each other. And honestly, I only showed up that day because someone asked the question. That was my lesson about conversation. Choose to be brave about learning, and then ask the damn question. The truth is that we're all different, and we shouldn't run away from that. Some experiences you have are painful, and some are from love, and that is our existence. The further apart we are from the truth, the further apart we will become. We will never become closer as people if we don't find truth in the other. As young graduates, you have had li a limited number of experiences. And as a result, real talk here, you're blind to the realities of what other people might be going through. I certainly was. The good news is you have the rest of your life to make it a point to meet people who don't look think or act like you. I promise you they will teach you more than anything you can learn in a business school textbook. Today, you are graduating from the greatest business school in the country. That alone should make you proud. I'm sure it makes your parents and your loved ones proud. And let's take a moment to thank your families and those who have supported you for your time here at Wharton's. As you enter this next phase of your lives, show up so that those who don't have the opportunity can also feel they belong. Embrace the differences, find the other, and ask questions that others are too uncomfortable to ask. Make money, sure, but help someone along the way. Go about the business of yourself. You'll be working at that for the rest of your life. And finally, always, more than anything, be there for the people you love and who love you back. 
I can't wait to see what your futures hold. Thank you, Dean Garrett, Deputy Dean Gibbons, Vice Dean Rosenkopf, esteemed faculty and alumni, and congratulations to the class of 2019.